Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today I wanted to share something with you guys, man. I got a letter in the mail, and I'm so, so excited about it. Uh, took me 10 months before I finally got this letter. And that letter is my approved Form 1 to uh, build my own SBR. Took a long time for this piece of paper to get here, but it finally got here, and I can finally do this. And that's add a buttstock to this pistol build that I made. Ah, now it looks complete. <laughs> this is an exciting day for me. Huh? You just don't understand. Just waiting on the day for me to be able to put a buttstock on here on my SBR. That was a very, very long wait for me. So I wanted to share this with you guys and uh, give you a little rundown on what I have. Uh, on my SBR. This SBR here, this is um, this was a little special because this is my only AR that I've actually built completely. The lower and the upper. I have three other ARs, uh, two rifles and another pistol and those, all three of those I only built the lower and then I bought the upper to add on to it. But this one here is a complete build. I bought everything separate, built this from the ground up. And I'm um, pretty excited about it. It runs great. I've been shooting it for the last few months and as a pistol, and it runs great just like it is. So I'm going to run down a list and let you guys know what I have uh, installed on this baby. So bear with me here. All right, first of all, I'm going to start with the lower, uh, the strip lower. The strip lower was uh, Panther Arms, uh, DPMS. Uh, got it um, back in, I believe, last May. At the time, lowers were just starting to come back in stock for good prices. So I purchased it, decided this was going to be my SBR project. Um, next, I, I went with a Palmetto State lower parts kit. I went with the Palmetto State Upper and a Palmetto State Upper Parts Kit. Um, uh, at the I think they had a nice little sale on them. I believe the Upper was a blemished Upper, and I never found any blem on it. Now, I didn't find a problem with it. It fits perfectly to the lower, and it's great. I mean, it was like 33 bucks or something like that, and I bought about three of them, so for different little bills that I made. Um, so let's see what else. I have a Ergo Grip. I have a Magpul bad lever, Magpul ASAP sling attachment. I have a Magpul buttstock with the extended recoil pad. Um, I have a oh my god! I have the CMC trigger. It's from a company in Texas. It's a flat front trigger. It doesn't have the curve. It's a three and a half pound trigger. The reset on this trigger is so sweet. It's by far the best trigger I've ever used. I have a Geisley on one of my other AR builds and I have a, a polished, uh, I forget the other type of trigger but it was just polished by and enhanced by Geisley and by far this one here outperforms to me, outperforms both of those. And I know Geisley is very very well respected and I'm not talking down about them because I do love my Geisley two stage that's in my, all my other uh, AR but this one here, this is a great trigger. I, I believe it's just because of the flat front it, it doesn't have that curve, so the reset on it is just that much more crisp to me. I mean, it, it's a great trigger. Uh, I went with the CNS pins, trigger pins, which I have on all my builds. If you don't have those on your builds, you, re you really need to check them out. Uh, it cuts down a lot of wear on your, uh, that your rotating pins can put on your lower receiver. Um, a Magpul. Uh, angled uh, trigger guard. Uh, let's see what else. I went with uh, a 20 round P -Mag. 30 round P mag. For the gun grabbers out there who get upset about the 30 rounds, I got what I call mag pools. Fuck you. I got the 40 rounder. So <laughs> that's a great little magazine right there. And if that's not enough.
I also have the 100 round drum magazine. <laughs> so, uh, that's a lot of ammo for you. Back to the 20 rounder. Okay, let's see what else do I have here. I have a primary arms red dot. This is a MD10. I have a, a quite a few primary arms optics, and um, they're great for the money. You can't beat them. So I, I recommend those guys over there. Uh, let's see what else. I have Yankee Hill machine backup front and back iron sights. Uh, went with the Troy Alpha Battle Rail. Also went with the Troy uh, Rubber Grips. And I went with this is uh, just a little cheap Amazon um, hand hand stop that I use. I like it a lot. I actually use this on a couple of my ARs. And I also went with the Troy Quick Disconnect uh, Sling Attachment. The barrel is in it, like I said, an 11 inch. Uh, chrome line barrel uh, with, with the, the gas tube is a pistol ver uh, pistol size a pistol size gas tube um, the gas block that I went with I have a SLR rifle works adjustable gas block and I also went with uh, I believe it's a PR PRI or PCI uh, anyway it's a gas buster charging handle and then on the other side, I also went with, I uh, replaced my forward assist and went with another gas, uh, uh, gas releasing forward assist. So it's non-operational. It just has a hole in it to actually release more of the gas that comes back from the uh, uh, from your gas tube. The reason I have all of this is because I also run this suppressed. And when you run your AR suppressed, you get a lot of gas back in your face. So to help alleviate that. Uh, I added those three options. And a mass and head shots. And about four stragglers at 25 yards. The adjustable gas block does a lot uh, does a lot to help reduce the gas, but it helps even more with that forward assist and that charger handle. It helps a lot. Um, so let's see what else. We have uh, ice arms, uh, boat carrier group, it's nickel boron boat carrier group. And then for the and then for the compensator, I went with uh, Strike Industries Fat Comp. Uh, it gives the look when I don't have my suppressor on it. It gives the look of like you have a, a suppressed uh, rifle here. And there you have it, guys. This it's a, it's a great shooter here. It's a little flashlight here. This is a Fab Defense flashlight holder, and this is just a little. Three dollar flashlight that I get off of Amazon. It's a good flashlight though. It works real good. I have about twenty of these <laughs> all around the house. I keep one in my pocket. Keep them on a couple of my firearms. It's a great flashlight. It comes right off. So I really don't need it. Then uh, that's it. That's it for this for uh, my SBR man. Wanted to show that one to you guys. Let you see it. Overall length on this whole rifle right now. It's 28 and a half inches. Now that's that's a pretty good size right there for close quarters. Um, for close quarter combat, that's a real good size. Uh, I like it a lot, and it's just long enough. You have to, I had to get an 11, at least an 11 inch barrel 
because I'm putting a suppressor on it and the suppressor company won't warranty it for a barrel under 11 inches so I put it right at 11 inches just to be safe there and when you when you apply for a SBR you have to give them the overall length for the barrel that you're going to mainly use on here so I did that and then I also built two more uppers so I'm going to go ahead and put another upper on here and show you another uh, way that I run this SBR Well, here's another version of my SBR right here. Same barrel, same length, and I just add my suppressor one to it. Uh, this is a Hunter Town Arms 556, uh, Kestrel 556 is what they call it, suppressor. And it's, it's pretty quiet to me. I mean, you know, as quiet as uh, 223 or 556 can be, um, I like it. I like it a lot. And I have, again, like I say, I have the, the gas block adjusted so that it can run. And this rig will run anything I put in it. I run uh, Herders, Wolf, Tull Ammo, any of the Russian stuff, it'll run it, no problem. I had to adjust the gas block to, uh, I believe, right around six clicks, and it'll, so that it'll uh, have just enough gas to eject the steel case ammo with no problem. The steel case, um, the steel casings with no problem. And if I run it with brass am or brass ammo, PMC bronze, or uh, if I run some 5.56 ammo, I can adjust it down a little bit less. I can adjust it down to four clicks, and it'll spit the uh, brass cases out with no problem. So I run all the tests on it. It takes anything I give it, <laughs> and it's just a real little rig, man. It's a real good rig. I really like it. Tell you what, I feel the weight with that suppressor on it. <laughs> I can't keep that there steady. Let me show you guys a couple other setups I have for it. Okay, now here's my same SBR lower, and I have it set up as a 22 long rifle. And it's, it's this is also a great little rig here. Uh, it's my training rig. It's when I can find 22 ammo. Well, I don't really want to run into my stash a lot, but if I find extra 22 ammo, this I take to the range, and I, I just sit there and put 300 rounds down range with this little guy because it's so fun. Um, it's a little bit picky with bulk ammo, uh, but it'll run it. But bulk ammo, and it's not the gun, it's the ammo. The ammo is just crappy as hell, and, and it gets a lot of... Um, gets a lot of fade too. excuse me it's not the, it's not the gun it's the ammo the ammo is crappy as hell gets a lot of uh, fade to ejects So I'm still working out, trying to work that little uh, kink out of the equation and uh, get this thing to run like it should. But other than that, she's a good, she's a good, good little runner. 
Now, I don't know if you're looking at it and wondering, you know, the rail is here and the barrel actually stops here. Well, this is a four inch barrel on this guy. And I have a seven inch Troy Alpha battle rail. I actually like these rails a lot. This is, I think I have it on four of my uppers. <laughs> I use it on four different uppers. Um, so I really like the Troy Alpha battle rail. It just feels good in my hand. In my hands. So I, I keep running with it. So this is it unsuppressed, and this is the suppressor that I use on it, and it's a Hunter Town Arms Guardian 22. So here's the same rifle with the suppressor on it. Uh, the suppressor I put on it is a Hunter Town Arms Guardian 22. Again, I have the same. I have a different red dot on this one. Uh, this is uh, another primary arms red dot. I believe this one here is called the MD. Uh, let's look. It's called the MDSP Red Dot or something like that. Um, also on here I have a CMMG 22 long rifle charging handle. Uh, again, I have the, to the TOCOM 4 inch um, carbon fiber barrel. Uh, I have some little cheap, since it's only a 22, I put some little cheap uh, Magpul. These are actually the PTS stock, the PTS uh, sites. These aren't even the real Magpul sites. I'll probably get some other sites for it, but for a 22, they stand up. You know, they're, I think they're pretty much for like air rifles or something, but they stand up, no problem. Um, also have a, a Black Dog Mag. I have a few of these. Uh, I make sure I get the one with the uh, with the steel feed lips, and the barrel is also a Tocom. Um, guy over there, Tocom Tim, give him a shout out. Uh, the upper that I built this on was uh, another primary state armory uh, blemished upper. And it has the actual forward assist. Mm. And it went together real nice, man. It, uh, it's like I said, this is a great shooter. It's so quiet. With that, four in, with that four inch barrel and that suppressor, it actually keeps bulk ammo subsonic. So the bulk ammo is just as quiet as subsonic 22 ammo. So it's a great run. It's a great running rig, as long as I don't get any failure to <laughs> failure to ejects out of that bulk ammo. But when it's running, it is running it, and it runs it flawless. So and again with that trigger, wow, that that trigger I can't say enough about it. So there's my 22 long rifle setup for my SBR. I wanted to show you guys that one. Um, I'm gonna take a little break and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you guys another little sneak peek at another at another build that I'm, I'm, I'm working on right now. So, Alright, so what do we have here? Well, this isn't another AR-15. This one here is actually my 300 blackout upper that I'm working on now. It's not complete yet. I haven't tested it out. I haven't shot it yet. Um, it's almost done. Actually, the only thing I really need is an adjustable gas block. That's the only thing holding me up. 
Um, I haven't really worried about getting it complete yet because, well, I can't find ammo. So, so until I can find some ammo to shoot, it's not really a priority right now. I mean, I've went this far, and the only reason I went this far was because the parts that I found for it, I found at great prices, and I just couldn't pass them up. And I, I got this far on it. Um, if you guys don't know 300 Blackout, it's, it's a very, very nice round. Uh, and uh, I, I just can't wait to get it built. But until I can find some ammo at decent prices, this is pretty much how it's going to stand. But I'll let you know what I have on it right now. I have, uh, again, Yankee Hill backup irons. Uh, this was another, like I said, I bought three Palmetto State uppers because I knew I was going to do these three builds. So this is another Palmetto State blemished upper and the parts kit. Um, this one, uh, I have a Bravo Company uh, charging handle. Bravo Company charging handle. Um, the barrel is an 8 inch ice arms barrel and they have a lifetime warranty on their barrels also so if you haven't heard of them you guys check them out they're pretty decent with their prices I uh, also have a ice arms sunburst compensator for the 300 blackout barrel because it's not the same size barrel as a, a AR-15 barrel so you have to get the different size compensator this is like a knockoff of the Noveski pig um, except it doesn't have the cone design in the inside so I'll try it out see how it works it's like 40 bucks if I don't like it then I'll sell it to somebody else at a discount so hopefully they'll like it the rail is a head down uh, key mod rail these are you know key mod as far as rails go they're pretty much the newer type rails now that's coming out everybody's pretty hot over them um, head down is a Georgia company um, if you haven't checked out their website, check them out. They make some real, real unique ARs. I mean, it's an AR where you can actually, it's a, like a takedown AR. You can actually disconnect the uh, barrel and everything. It has a quick detach for the barrel. It has a custom case, all of that stuff. And, uh, so check those guys out if you haven't. So I actually just got their, uh, their rail. So uh, Let's see, what else here? 40 round PMAG. <laughs> Got to go back to that, and I also have uh, Ice Arms again, Nickel Boron uh, Boat Carry Group. So this guy here, man, I I, I I just need a gas block for it. So I'm going to get um I don't know what kind of gas block I'm going to get now yet. I don't know if I want to go with a Seekins. I've been looking at those, or if I want to go ahead and get an SLR Rifle Works gas block like I have on my other ER. I may just keep it with the SLR just because I'm used to the other one and it works well but I was hearing some good things about Seekins also so I kind of wanted to check them out but I don't know until the ammo prices come back to a reasonable or actually in stock I'm not even going to worry about it so right now that's that's where this one sits this is where this one lies it's still incomplete um, sitting in the back of the safe and um, hopefully one day I'll get it out I'll get it finished and I'll get it out to the range so I can test it out. So there you have it guys. That's my SBR in the three different uh in the three different calibers that I plan on carrying it. Um again this is the 556 version here. Uh it's a it's a good running rig, man. I can't talk about it enough. Once you go to a SBR, the 16 inch uh ARs, you probably won't even want to run them anymore. <laughs> I tell you, this 11 and a half inch, man, it gets a lot of attention when I take it to the range. It's just, it's just a firecracker. She spits everything out. Uh, the velocity change isn't too different, from what I understand. Um, uh, it's just a great little guy, man. I really wouldn't go any shorter than 11 or 10 inch barrel. When you go too short of a barrel, you actually lose a lot of velocity and. Um, and then I know a lot of people like those seven inch barrels. I actually have a seven inch barrel on my AR pistol, and you like them because at night they put a big ball of flame out and everything like that. But um, I, I I like the ten inch or the or the I like my eleven inch barrel. Uh, not only because of the warranty on the on the uh, on the suppressor, but I think it's just that right size for me. So it's a great little gun. Um, I enjoy it a lot, and I'm just happy to finally get a butt stock on it. 
I'm going to take it out to the range tomorrow and just strut in there happy to have a butt stock on the back of this baby and, and just wait for somebody to say, hey, is that thing legal? <laughs> Anyways, man, YouTube, you guys be safe, man. Y'all be easy. And I'm going to holler back at you later. Peace.